Hey, welcome to our discussion today, everyone. I'm Preston Barton, Vice President of Trade Compliance Solutions at Descartes Systems Group. I'm honored to have Jonathan Pergantz. He's the Director of Business Systems for Commercial and Corporate Affairs at Megat PLC. Jonathan, welcome. Good to be here, Preston. Yeah, thanks for uh, joining me today. So uh, for our discussion today, we want to talk about a number of compliance issues, specifically how Megat tackles a lot of uh, compliance and regulatory requirements that they're probably uniquely challenged with just given their aerospace and defense uh, industry that they serve. Uh, so tell me a little bit about your role at Megit. So as you mentioned before, my role is I'm the, I'm the director of business systems for our corporate and commercial affairs organization, which encompasses our legal department, our commercial organization, contracts, and our trade compliance function. Um, Megat is a leading aerospace and defense provider um, with, fo with a focus in uh, also a small amount of business within our um, selected energy markets. Um, so we're on most Western aircraft, uh, just about every Western aircraft that flies. So we spend a lot of time dealing with various uh, import and export regulations across uh, various regimes from the U.S. through Europe, um, the United Kingdom, Australia, um, and throughout Southeast Asia. So we, we have a very unique set of challenges sometimes when it comes to how we handle the export of our products um, to make sure we're in compliance with all of those regulations. That's great. So we interface with you in a number of areas in our trade compliance solutions business here. Maybe just to give uh, some of our viewers some context, Jonathan, can you briefly outline how Megat uses, uh, let's start with Descartes Customs Info, our global trade content library? as well as our visual compliance, uh, export compliance solutions. Yes, so with, it, with Customs Info, we use a, a few products within that product group. So we use a lot of the, the automated data feeds. Um, so we, on a nightly basis, will actually pull down um, USML categories. We pull down classification updates into our, um, our primary automated solution is our SAP GTS, Global mm -hmm. Trade the solution GTS. Sure. Um, so we pull the data feeds into there to help our employees um, have accurate data for classification of products, um, as well as uh, we also use the CI reference products offered by Descartes to help uh, help with the classification process. So um, that includes uh, things like explanatory notes, uh, previous rulings, and it brings a number of the different uh, different areas that we need to look at for classification and import data into one solution that has been tremendous to, uh, to in time savings for our organization. That's great. So classification research happens initially in Customs Info Reference, uh, but once decisions are being made where you're actually making those classifications, codifying that, getting your item compliance data together. That's all in SAP GTS, yes. which utilizes a lot of the Descartes uh, global trade content inside of that system as well. That's correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. That's it. You know that on the head. So it's in within GTS, uh, it, it, it's helpful because as, as many of you know, if you've dealt with this, we will, uh, the, the governments will update uh, those, those, those classifications on a sometimes biannual basis in certain countries. It's more frequent than that. Sure. And by having that automated data feed from Descartes, we don't have to manually go through and determine which products have changed. We get a new data file from Descartes. When those changes happen, we click one button in the system and it shows us right away, here's every product that changed. And if it's a one-to-one -one change, we have we click one other button and those classifications are updated. So without having that automated solution in place, it's it would be a very time-consuming process to have to go through our ERP systems, look at the regulations, determine what has changed, and then manually go through and update all of those classifications. That's great. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. But at a high level, then, how do you use our visual compliance, export compliance solutions related to that environment? So in addition, uh, we are using visual compliance uh, for within uh, within our environment for screening. So we, on a, again, on a nightly basis, we pull in visual compliance. We pull in watch lists from visual compliance, and we're using, I think, every watch list that is available through there. And so we're able to screen our um, all of our partners, so our customers, our vendors, our banks, on a nightly basis, and if there are any potential hits on there, it actually will stop any of our export transactions directly within the system. Um, in addition to that, we've act, and we'll talk about this shortly, but we're also integrating that visual compliance data with a number of other business systems to help reduce some of the workload for our employees to try to stay compliant with these with these regulations. Okay, great. So hey, we're very fortunate. We've done a lot together, uh, handled a lot of import compliance, a lot of export compliance, various systems. So let's go back maybe to the global trade content that serves SAP GTS. Specifically, why did you choose the Descartes Customs Info and global trade content solution uh, from Descartes? 
So Megat looked at that. They looked at a few vendors in that area. And from what the, the, the breadth of data that we were able to get through Descartes was what attracted us to the solution. So we were able to get, as I mentioned, HTS classification data, USML classification mm -hmm. data, um, as well as things such as rules of origin. So as, as mm -hmm. we look towards the future and wanting to take more advantage of free trade agreements, we are we now have those rules of origin in the system to help help uh, help make that happen. Um, as we roll out, as we continue to roll out our GTS solution to more countries, we're able to quickly talk to talk to Descartes. Um, and get the get the classification files or any of the country specific files we need if we're operating in any new country. So it's really reduced the effort we have when we want to deploy in, in new countries mm -hmm. based on where our business is growing. So that was one of the key drivers, I think, to going the going the Descartes Customs Info route was just, again, a massive amount of knowledge um, already into one place. And we didn't have to try to pull different data from di from various different sources. That's great. So. Tell me about integrating that with GTS. How easy has it been to integrate that global trade content into your trade management environment? It's a it's a very simple process. Um, in fact, because the data we get from um, from Descartes, they've already worked with SAP on what those data structures look like. So it's a it's a the the data the files we get are already structured specifically for GTS. So we do have a small upload program that runs on a nightly basis that pulls those pulls those data files in and updates them directly within uh, within GTS. So it's a very seamless process. It's, it's it's we have it all automated. So there, if there's an error, we have to go in and look. But that's a that's a rare occasion that that happens. Sure. Um, and then if there is in 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 the case of something like Brexit, we're able to quickly add a new file in. So with with Bre with the UK now being separate, there will be different rules there, and we can get the new list types directly for the UK and just add those in separate from the EU lists. That's great. I, I know we've been very fortunate to collaborate with you and a number of others in the user community, as well as our trade management partners themselves, uh, to really just better understand what content and data challenges they're facing, what new things we have to source, how to get that to work in the system. So, uh, so that's been a great journey uh, that we've been fortunate to be on with you. Um, talk a little bit about ECCN and USML. That's obviously an area where you have to spend a lot of time given your aerospace and defense industry. Uh, is that data that's benefiting you that you're using, et cetera? Yes, it is. So we're able to pull that data in into the system so we don't have to go through and enter the thousands of different options <laughs> for uh, sure. by hand for what the what what actual classifications could be. So when we are classifying our product for export, we're able to easily just select from the list and we know that is an accurate and valid list at the time of the classification. And in the case if there are any classifications that have changed, um, such as during uh, during ECR, when that started, mm -hmm. we're able to quickly go in and say, okay, show us all of the parts that are affected um, because of the various categories that we're changing. So yeah, knowing those were accurate classifications was key to um, to the, the the accuracy of our data. Sure, that's great. So is the Descartes Global Trade Content Solution, is that something that you'd recommend to other businesses that are looking to cross the same chasm, prop up trade management, uh, handle key compliance issues? Absolutely. Um, I've worked with, I've actually worked with Descartes um, in previous organizations I've been in, and it's, it's sort of the go-to, I would say, within our industry, of of who can provide this data and provide it in a in a format that we need. So I am a, I, I would absolutely recommend it. Um, Preston, you and I have been again. We've worked together on different projects, and I consider Descartes a key partner for us as we look to build out our compliance programs and start to look even more on some of our import and where we can save additional revenue, save money for our organization through the use of some of the tools that Descartes offers us. Uh, likewise, we're very fortunate, uh, feel very honored to work with you. So Jonathan, next I'd like to talk specifically about how you handle screening. I think you have a fairly unique approach uh, due to uh, various, uh, probably numerous use cases, and as well as the specific regulatory and compliance requirements that you face just given the industry that you're in. Uh, so tell me, why did you choose the Descartes Visual Compliance Solution uh, as your screening system? So we may have looked at a number of different screening providers again in the space, and visual compliance's offering was uh, it provided a number of different benefits that we didn't exactly see with other providers. So the the platform, the interface, and the ability to to really integrate it throughout some of our other business processes were definitely a driver for going that route. Um, our our 
we all of our employees have accounts to use it. So we needed something that was also easy to use for the organization. Uh, we didn't want so some of the some of the sy systems can be a little bit more uh, complex. So having something that was easy to use for our employees was a key decision on that. Okay, that's great. So then, how does visual compliance really help your ability to sell? Which is maybe an interesting question to ask someone who runs compliance. But how does it help you sell and then serve the broader business? So every transaction we do, we we screen against. We screen a number of the different government watch lists. And more recently, we've had to start screening for beneficial ownership research. So determining who the owners of some of our customers are, as there are different rules under on the under OFAC that would, mm -hmm. would control that. So by being able to have a strong, strong confidence in the in the screening that's done we're able to open up some potential business opportunities that if we had to do this manually wouldn't be available because it would be too onerous to have to go through and try to screen this okay. by hand. so it's really it, it allows us to know from the because of the way we've integrated it with our solution we know from the minute an order is taken and a end user or a customer is put in we know if we're able to do business with that and if we're able to ship that okay. order because it will block it from the minute it's come in if there is a watch list screening and then it block okay. it a, a hit and then it will continue to check screen all the way up until the point of delivery. So even if that is six or eight months away when we take that order to when delivery may be, we still know we can still be confident in our ability to um, make those to compliantly make those sales to our customers. Okay, so some level of agility, some level of of comfort around accuracy and doing due diligence when entering new markets or signing up new partners. Exactly. Okay, that's great. So this is something that we face in a lot of large organizations, uh, the challenge of integrated screening, lots of systems, uh, you know, whether it's multiple ERPs or, you know, CRMs, or uh, we all probably remember when visitor screening actually happened uh, when we weren't uh, all sequestered in our homes. Uh, but how is the, the ability to integrate screening across the enterprise really benefited you? Can you talk to that a little bit? Absolutely, Preston. Um, so I will be 100% clear and honest on this. Trait compliance <laughs> is not always viewed as an enabler of the organization. Sure. Um, if you look at lean, me lean methods and lean tools, a lot of what trait compliance has to do is a non-value added task, but it's a non-value added but necessary task because if we break the rules, we're in trouble. Sure. So by looking at integrating some of these solutions more into more of our business processes and reducing the burden on the organization to do these processes manually, we've actually been able to improve compliance because now we know if we enter something in our CRM system and we've integrated visual compliance within, within that CRM system, which is something that we're actively working on right now, we know that those customers and those potential sales are already, are already being screened prior to um, prior to even going down a path of engaging with them. Because if we realize at the, at the very front of the process that you know, this, this customer, we're not going to make this sale, we save a lot of time on the business of doing, on doing work uh, that they don't need to do. And secondly, we don't need them to go into another system to do the screening and then PDF the results and then keep a record of it. By integrating it, everything is done in one system, in the system that the user wants to use without having to jump to multiple solutions. Um, as you, you, interesting point that you brought up visitors, because uh, we're, we're actually in the process of a global visitor system deployment, um, partially to reduce the burden on screening. Um, and one of our key requirements for that was to find a system, to, to find a, a provider that had visual compliance as a partner that would they integrated with. So the solution we picked actually has out of the box, a direct connection to visual compliance. Mm -hmm. And all I needed was a username and password and it works. So it's been a very simple process, a simple integration that has allowed us to reduce our visitor um, our visitor screening process from about 30 minutes per visitor down to about five minutes per visitor. Um, so it, 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 it's a huge win for us, and we're, we're currently in the process of rolling that out globally right now. Okay. Well, I, I look, I sincerely uh, look forward to the day when I can uh, visit you in person and get screened uh, via that system. Uh, that'll be a good day. So we spent a fair amount of time in compliance talking about reducing risk, uh, mitigating risk, uh, ensuring that uh, our customers and in their unique business processes are staying out of trouble. At the same time, we also want to reduce labor and, and hours. And so can you talk a little bit about how you know, integrated screening across the enterprise 
you know, maybe visibility into all of the things that are going on. And, and obviously, I think the example you just used is implementing a solution that's fairly turnkey. Uh, you know, how has that reduced costs or, uh, you know, or, or hours of labor, et cetera, inside of the business? Have you seen an, an uplift there? We have. Um, based off of that one example, by rolling out um, a standard system, we're expecting to see around a 300,000 pound, um, sorry, UK company. So over 300,000 <laughs> US dollars sure. on, on ROI yearly by being able to integrate that and reduce the time on that process. Um, another key example I would say is we we recently went to um, to Descartes actually within the last year to look at how we can better screen for beneficial ownership research. Sure. Um, prior and, and right now we're currently using one of uh, Descartes partners to bring in beneficial ownership research feeds into our visual compliance platform and some of our automated solutions. By by getting that data into a common platform, we were able to have all of our employees again do the same screening without needing to go into a different system. Prior to that, we were going to outside law firms and having yeah. the, the, having those entities screened. And the one of the problems with that approach is it's a time it's it's a point in time transaction. Sure. So if we screen that partner on June first, we know on June first they were not on a list. But on June seventh or July twentieth or December thirty first, we don't know if they've been added to that list unless we go back and have that research done again. By getting that feed into the system, it's reduced how often we have to do it. We, we have to engage those outside partners at a, at a much higher rate. Um, and one of the examples we received from one of our Swiss, Switzerland sites was um, they said it was it was going to save, uh, I'm trying to remember the exact numbers, but it was upwards of um, a week's worth of time for an engineer every year in screening. And we know our engineers make a little bit more than some of some of the standard employees. So sure. it was very quick ROI to be able to look at adding that feed into our solution and, and giving that benefit across our greater organization. Oh, that That's great. I, I think uh, there's a number of examples where obviously you guys have brought a lot of your own thought leadership uh, to tackle those issues. And I think beneficial ownership is a challenge, of course. I mean, it's a, it's a requirement, uh, yet uh, it's not like another screening list where a government is shining a light on who these actors are. Uh, there's not always a real clear path to to solving the compliance issue uh, without a little extra help. So I think you guys have taken a really unique approach to that, and uh, it's probably a testament to your own compliance expertise. So let's talk next about what is your overall customer experience been with Descartes. Uh, I think having good solutions, having turnkey solutions having the right data in the right place or the right workflow inside of a system so that you can make appropriate compliance decisions uh, at the at the point of need is great. And, and having a broad integrated screening approach to capture all the various use cases, those, those are all wonderful. Uh, however, that doesn't hold up if you don't get good support, uh, if you're not well taken care of, and if you don't have a partner that is invested in innovating is it invested in understanding your processes and your unique needs and your unique needs? Excuse me, and and then uh, trying to innovate uh, based upon uh, those customer requests. So, can you just talk a little bit about your overall customer experience being a a Descartes uh, customer and partner? Absolutely, Preston. Um, I, I'm a I've been very impressed with Descartes customer service um, with the your willingness to want to act as a partner and not just a um, not just a supplier of things to us. Um, it's been, I, pr I like to have those type of relationships with the vendors that I work with. And I know I, I, one of the things I like about Descartes is their size. Mm -hmm. And you're not the, the hundred pound gorilla or thousand pound gorilla. Mm -hmm. um, you're, you're a good size that I know I can directly reach out to the people that I need to um, and ask the questions and I get immediate turnaround. So even if we have assigned customer service representatives for our accounts. And even if those people are out of the office, I get a response within minutes from someone else on the team if there is an issue or a request that comes in. Um, I've been on the I've been on the phone with the head of the a visual a visual compliance with Mark. Mm -hmm. and yeah. he, he jumps on the calls if there's something that we need help with. So mm -hmm. I, what I've seen from Descartes, it doesn't matter what level in the organization you are, any they're willing to jump in and help if there's something that a customer needs. So it's been a to me, it's been a very good partnership, and I look forward to continuing to find ways to to utilize the Descartes solutions within our environment. 
uh, that, that's great to hear. Uh, certainly appreciate the uh, the kind comments. I think uh, in our work, we love it when someone's having a great customer experience. We also love when someone tells us how we can improve. So uh, I think that type of feedback has been essential, and uh, you've been uh, great in providing that to us in the past as well. So is there anything else that makes the visual compliance solution stand out to you? Anything else uh, you want to discuss? One of the things, there are a number of other offerings within the visual compliance platform that we've we've looked at using um, that could provide, as I mentioned earlier, SAP GTS is, is our primary focus area. Mm -hmm. However, we have some sites that aren't on an, aren't an SAP shop or don't necessarily have the volumes that we need to um that, we, that it makes sense in, to justify an SAP GTS mm -hmm. one. How, so we are looking and evaluating some of the other visual compliance products to potentially find other ways to automate our solutions for some of our smaller sites. Um, so there, I, there's a range of products within the offering that are available for companies of, of all sizes. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that I like is there's, there, I know I have the tools in my toolbox mm -hmm. of things. If, so if, as we come across new challenges and new problems, knowing that, I have those Descartes tools available to us if we want to use them is is very helpful for me um, because there's always new problems showing up and there's and there's divestitures and acquisitions and sometimes we might need a tool to use um, to use very quickly and I know having those available is is, is definitely a key uh, key piece of interest for me within the visual compliance and Descartes offering. That's great. Well, Jonathan, I sincerely thank you for all of your great feedback and collaboration today. Uh, it's been a pleasure spending time with you. I look forward to continuing to support you on this journey and doing everything we can to make sure that all of your trade compliance projects uh, are a resounding success. And I uh, wish you well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Preston. I appreciate it.